this everyone watching TV, watching Hulu, however you uh, watching your favorite sports. Day seven, everyone. We did it. No running for seven days. Feeling amazing. All right, let's open this up, see what's in here. Da, da, da. Okay, let's see. What is this? Oh, yeah. Whoa, there it is. Oh, some fresh Dr. Teals. All right, so as I already mentioned, this is the seventh day of no running. Pretty insane. Uh, the soreness is officially gone from the World Mountain Running Championships. I, I but. I'm not gonna run today. I wanted to so bad. Actually, starting last night, I was getting that itch, a major itch, but I decided, okay, seven days fully off, no running, because I'm not forgetting about, hold on, I'm not forgetting about the Amsterdam and New York City marathons that were, what, uh, five weeks ago and then three weeks ago? And yes, Dr. Teal says, hi, Seth, congratulations on, re congratulations on recently completing the New York City Marathon. We are excited for you to relax and recover with Dr. Teal's Muscle Recovery Epsom Salt Soaks in Vitamin C Lotion and Foaming Bath. Dr. Teal's, you rock. I love Dr. Teal's for my muscle recovery. And so we're gonna put this to use later tonight, absolutely. And I've never actually tried this Glow and Radiance Vitamin C. Bottom line, everyone, like, Oh, I would love to take two weeks off, as I said yesterday, but I just can't afford it. I actually counted up the days today. 57 days to go until Houston. That is actually, that's actually more time than I thought there would be. Um, I'm excited about that miniature training block, carrying the fitness that I've gained from early, from all of 2019. Uh, but officially, I'm going to dive into the topic today about really training like a marathon runner. It's kind of crazy to talk about and that transi transition from the Pikes Peak Ascent to the Amsterdam Marathon and what happened during that transition and what's going through my mind mentally now. So anyway, I'm excited. We're gonna go get the USA bag. Let's rock and roll so we can start to rebuild and really make sure that I'm staying healthy as the speeds begin to pick up for the Houston Marathon training block. Here we go. Okay, there we go. So there has been a little pushback in the comments and uh, different places about people just questioning, Seth, why would you ever transition from the beautiful mountain running to the roads? Like, and I get it, it's beautiful in the mountains, uh, seeking beauty up there. You know, you just get it in that vertical gain that I love. But I'm telling you everyone, the camaraderie that I experienced chasing butter in Amsterdam and uh, running with Jordan in the streets of Brooklyn in New York City in the New York City Marathon, like just being like in trail running and ultra running, it's fun, but a lot of times you're kind of out there solo to a certain extent. Like sometimes you can lock into a couple guys, but I have experienced in my racing that you're just, you're going and you're going for miles and miles, a lot of times solo. So uh, not exclusively, but I'm telling you, I'm so excited for Houston for that bond and that battle cry of just working together through the streets of Houston. So anyway, that's one of the reasons I'm excited to uh, begin to train exclusively for the marathon, as, as painful as it is to, for me to say that. Uh, but first, we got to stretch. Now, part of the transition to the marathon is I know I've got to work on my mobility and flexibility for a better stride and better mechanics, as we talked about yesterday, which begins with some blue rub, just to work out some kinks in the body. You know, overall, I must say I'm feeling pretty good. Not too many aches and pains. Uh, just a little, a few little niggles in the feet. Um, nothing major, but I just want to get on top of it because I'm gonna work like right through there. It's just a little crunchy, just a little crunchy. can do this everyone watching TV, watching Hulu, however you uh, watching your favorite sports teams or maybe even just watching the crackling fire. I 
I know I can run hard and far and pretty fast. Um, can I stretch and work on my turnover, work on my mobility at the degree of my running? Meaning I'm not getting any younger and I know I've got to keep my turnover up, keep my stride nice and smooth and not really lengthen the stride, but just make sure it's getting the most out of it as possible um, through these, just paying attention to the little details, releasing. I got to release all the tension of the vertical of 2019, which I'll just tell you, 300 and I think we're sitting at 19,000 feet of vertical gain in 2019 so far. 319,000. That's a doozy. That's quite a bit. So I just got to kind of release all of that muscle strength and turn it into speed and turnover, if that makes sense. Oh, that feels really, it hurts so bad, but it feels really good. Oh, jeez. You will make progress, everyone. You will make progress if you're consistent. Only if you're consistent. Just stretching, foam rolling. Oh, it's so hard to be consistent sometimes, but that is the ticket. That is the ticket. Oh, oh you son of a gun. Ooh. Feeling better, feeling better, feeling better. All right, I'm going to need your accountability and help, everyone, with stretching in the next 57 days going into Houston. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do, but I know I need to drill down a little bit more into the pain cave of, again, working on the mobility and the overall flexibility of the body as speeds begin to pick up. Now, I do think that all that mountain running set me up pretty good for strong legs, uh, solid red blood cell recruitment up, up in the high altitudes, and led me to that 106 in Amsterdam, 107, it, you know, high 106 uh, for the half with, I don't know if you remember, I had to double check, I went back to Strava with only one, what I would consider one speed session, interval work. Remember I did 12 by 1K in Leadville, Colorado at 10,000 feet uh, with 90 seconds rest, and that, that but that, that aerobic base, that strength from the mountains, I do think set me up well for, for Amsterdam. However, now, if I, in my mind, how do I go from a 106.53 down to, let's say, a 104.50, meaning, meaning shaving two minutes off of a half marathon? That is a big deal. It's not, you just can't do it with a snap of the fingers. Um, therefore, like I said inside, it's time for me to begin to dial in the marathon training just a little bit. Do I regret all the mountain running I did in 2019? 100% no. I love it up there. At the end of the day, you gotta do what you love, but now discovering the bond that you form in these road marathons where you're just battling with these guys for miles and miles, it just has struck a chord with me. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, and for your training, think about you as well, I've got 57 days to go. You might be getting ready for Boston or for, oh man, and we're gonna talk about this in the second video publishing today, but maybe you have 90 days to go for your marathon. That's a finite amount of time that you have to work with. Whether you wanna break it down into days, into hours, into minutes, to sleep, uh, recover, eat, work, be with your family, and yes, run. Uh, so, I am currently strategizing the right, I'm going inside after this and I'm gonna be continuing to write out the training plan and basically figuring out, okay, how many times can I run in the next 57 days to get as fit as possible and be as fresh as possible and as healthy as possible at the starting line in Houston. So um, I am sadly going, and I'm pointing this way because that's, the, uh, that's where the mountains are from my studio. I'm saying no to the vertical, so I can say yes to more speed work, and I won't get into the details right now, but most especially, everyone, more form work, okay, form drills, um, a little bit of plyometrics, and uh, recovery slash stretching, foam rolling, what you just saw me doing inside. I know I can run forever and ever. I know, mean it like I love it, but it's the little things, like the, for, the efficiency of the elite marathon runners out there is special. 
And I think I, you know, as we talked about a couple days ago, running form, I think I'm doing pretty well. I hope you, maybe some of you, actually let me know down in the comments if you've taken out your iPhone in the last two days since that vlog published and filmed yourself running to look at your running form. Uh, and maybe if you, maybe you're seeing something that's a little off, let us know down, or maybe your, your form like to you looks pretty good. Let us know down in the comments. But I know that by saying no to the 14ers, to Gray's Peak and Quandry and all that goodness up there, I, I believe that I'm going to be able to become more efficient in my marathon preparation and ultimately the, the marathon race. Um, so, finite amount of hours, that's kind of my lesson. My little tip of the day is like, just think about, hmm, how many hours do I have in the next three months? Or maybe you're doing a short training block like me of 57 days. Okay, all right, that is it. Uh, we're going inside, gonna write out the plan. Let's go. I uh, might as well ask the question of the day now before I forget. Uh, how is your question of the day? How is your transitioning going? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere especially, how is your transitioning going to winter running? I'm just starting to dabble in it because I was in Argentina last week, so that's the question of the day. Or, I guess reverse, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, chime in, how's your transitioning going to summer running? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, getting ready for Houston, how much snow we get here in Denver. And yeah, it, last year was a pretty heavy snow year, so anyway, that will be con interesting to see. Um, okay, here's my training log, and I'm just going to write down some notes. Before I stretch out, actually I better stretch out first. Okay, I'm not going to fill in the entire training regimen and program right now for Houston. I will finish this, I, you know, I never like to rush it, and so what I do I think I've mentioned this before is I put it on paper first for me I'm a little old school I love it really helps now I could do this on my Google Calendar but it really helps me for some reason to visualize it on a physical piece of paper and yes a pencil so I can erase and then I go back and I plug it into my spreadsheet once I feel comfortable that uh, once I feel comfortable with what I've laid out so right now I'm just plugging in I you know overall volume and I'll begin to plug in the key workouts over the next couple days, basically, over the weekend. So, feeling good though, 57 days, bada bing, bada boom, rock and roll. Got the question of the day. Hope you guys had a great day, have a great weekend around the world, and uh, go seek some beauty out there. How's that sound? Or, or work hard. If you're you know, going to get a race done, go get it done. So, all right, everyone, we're tossing it back tonight to the uh, plyometrics vlog from maybe seven months ago where I talk about uh, basically working on form and explosion off of the uh, starting line so that'll be on the right and then on the left we'll throw it back to the volume vlog where we talk about how much how many miles you should be uh, considering running so all right there you have it seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow